All right, guys, welcome to this first podcast, this first episode. And today we have a very special guest, my brother Priyank, who actually went from working at McDonald's to being one of the most highly paid copywriter in the French market. So the value today is going to be insane, a lot of value, and I hope you guys will appreciate it. Priyank, can you please quickly introduce yourself to the audience? Hey, man. Hey, guys. Thank you for the, the uh, glorifying introduction. So, yeah, my name is Priyank. I'm 26 years old. I'm this guy's brother. And yeah, I guess I'm basically a copywriter. So I get to write uh, copy and I offer marketing services to people in the internet uh, space. So basically people who sell um, online coaching, online courses, stuff like that. And I mostly work with business owners that, are, that make at least a million dollars a year in sales. So that's what I do on the business side. But on the personal side, um, I'm also like a fitness enthusiast. I've been going to the gym heavily mm. for the past like six, seven years. <laughs> and what I do, is, especially in that field, is that I do like calisthenics. Um, and so, yeah, I started creating content as well for myself. So uh, I create content about like fitness, mindset, and finances to help people, you know, build their finances, their body, and uh, and their, uh, their mindset as well. So that's what I do. Yeah, super inspiring, super inspiring. Can, can you tell us more about how you got started, how you get into copywriting? Dude, that's going to be a long story. <laughs> so how did I get started? Uh, it all started in 2017, I think. At the mm. time, I was like, um, I think I was like, how, how old was I? It was like six years ago. So yeah, I was about 20, I think. Yeah. And at the time, I was a college student. I was studying something that I hated, uh, which was business management, but it was like so much theory and mm. like you hadn't like it, nothing that I've learned there at the time uh, was useful in like what I do right now. So I was studying something that I hated and my brother, so this guy, <laughs> you yeah. started to, um, uh, you know, reach out to like physical local businesses, like Remember. restaurants, basically brick and mortar businesses. Yeah. And you offer, you were offering them like marketing services. So I remember. You were offering them marketing services and the first service that you were offering them was like building their websites, even though I think at the time you did not know how to build websites. <laughs> yeah, that's true, man. I was just hiring someone from India <laughs> to do it. <laughs> so at the time you were already delegating and uh, we'll talk about delega delegation later because this was all super useful for me for, but in 2017, you, my brother, started to like reach out to restaurants and offer them marketing services. So um, you needed someone to write the content in the... Um, the text that we put on the websites that mm. you were selling. So um, I had like zero experience in that field, mm -hmm. but yeah, you just like, you trusted me and you were like, hey, I don't really know how to write. Can you write stuff for these websites? And uh, I said, yeah, I'll do it. And so I was getting paid like, I think anywhere in between like 50 to 100 bucks <laughs> per website <laughs> yeah. that I could write. It was taking me like up to a month to write a an entire yeah. project, but was getting paid like 1500 bucks. And I was so happy about that. Yeah. So that was back in 2017. And um, fast forward three years later. So we did that like with restaurants and other physical businesses for like two to three years. And then when COVID hit, mm. um, that's when, you know, e the e-learning space exploded. Like people started like selling online courses everywhere on the internet. That was crazy. You could see like a lot of people doing like master classes, webinars, and so there was an opportunity in that in that space. Yeah. So as always, you, my brother, like approached some people in that space. And um and these guys needed some people like to like run their ads. That's what you were doing at yeah. the time mm -hmm. in 2020. And you also needed someone to write their copy. So that's how I got involved the in the info space. Um so I got offered the opportunity to work with a French infopreneur guy who like was selling online courses and at the time I was like so so passionate about copy so that's um that was like something that I was really interested into so I started like writing copy for infopreneurs that's what I did I was like a little freelance I was getting paid like I think 10 or 12 bucks an hour for writing copy yeah, for these guys mm. and uh, along with that I was also writing copy in an agency that you were building you were building your first smma that we'll talk about later yeah so that's like in 2020 2021 at the time i'm starting to get paid a bit more for doing like my copywriting stuff i'm making about like 300 to like 500 euros um a month yeah uh so getting paid in, in between like 10 to 12 dollars an hour to do this was well, already good at that time right 
Yeah, it, it was pretty good because yeah. considering the fact that I, I was like still a student, mm -hmm. uh, still hating what I was studying as well. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it like, it gave me like a, a different way to approach like business and what I was doing. And I was like, all right, so th there might be an opportunity in copywriting. Yeah. I, I like that. So, uh, you know, I got even more interested in copywriting in late, in late 2021, 2022, beginning of 2022. And then uh, I started to have like a little burnout at the time. Mm. I was like, okay, right now I'm working like a, as, as a small freelancer, yeah. doing a bit of everything. I'm doing writing copy for these guys, like for your agency, plus like the other info printers that I work with. I'm writing copy. I'm also managing their like media buying campaigns, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not really getting like, I feel like if I keep on doing this for years, I yeah. won't really go anywhere. Mm. So in like mid 2022, uh, I decided to uh, to leave basically. So I said to everybody, like, "Hey, uh, so I, I remember." <laughs> yeah. So I left your your agency, yeah, which yeah, was yeah. like a great opportunity for me to get started. Uh, I also left like the other guy that I was working with, which was like an entrepreneur. Yeah. I left his company, and so uh, I had nothing left. So yeah. I remember at the time, like mid twenty twenty two, I had like two hundred thirty euros left in my bank account. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was remember. like, "Holy shit! What am I about to do with this now?" I was in Mauritius, I remember, uh, because I was like traveling a bit, living the laptop lifestyle with the bit of money that was left in my bank account. Yeah. And so I came back to Belgium mid 2022. And I was like, all right, now we got to find a fucking client. What mm -hmm. am I going to do? And so I had nothing less left. Um, I had never, never, ever approached a client by myself on the internet. And so I started like reaching out to people. Bought a course as well. Didn't mention that, but I bought a course that changed my life. Um, and so basically applied the methods and the strategies that I learned yeah. to reach out to people, reach mm. out to people in the info space. And I think, so in May 20, uh, 2022, I had like 230 bucks left in my bank account. Um, in June, I landed my first client. <laughs> That's scary, man. Yeah. yeah. And I think it was maybe because it literally like lit my chair on fire. I was like, like as Jason Capital will say, you know, yeah. like there's no other way. Like mm -hmm. you need to have yeah, that client. Yeah, you have to get it done. Yeah. And so May, I'm completely broke. June, I land my first client. Like my very first like big retainer, you know. Yeah. And um, How much was it, by the way? It was, I think it was, yeah, it was five grand. Wow. Yeah. So you went from being paid yeah. $12, not $12 per hour to five grand yeah. for one client. For one client. Yeah. And how, like, what, what did you offer to this client? So to get a bit more specific about it, do you want me to go like extremely deep into the marketing stuff or? Uh, yeah, just keep it like, you know, um, in a comprehensive way. So the, the audience can also understand because I know copywriting can sound a bit complex. We're going to talk about this later, how you can learn and everything. But yeah, All right. like, you know, how did you actually, what did you deliver to the client? So what I delivered to the client was um, something that's helping me a lot, like, and some other clients even now, a year later, but it was like um, a no-brainer offer, an offer that he could not refuse. Yeah. Um, I was offering the guy um, to manage their entire copywriting. Mm. So mostly in the email side of things. So, you know, businesses, they like send a lot of email marketing campaigns to their mm -hmm. clients, you know. Um, they invest a lot of money in their email list. So they, they pay like, they, they pay, they put money on ads. And when they put money on ads, they get like some people to opt in their, in their like newsletters. Yeah, I give you your details, huh? yeah? Subscribing. Yeah, they subscribe and they give you their, their de details like first name, last name, email. And so um, I mostly helped the guy make more money out of his email list. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was offering something like I would write them some emails, like email marketing campaigns on a day to day basis. I would do like, I think it was like 20 to 30 emails a day. Uh, sorry, a month. So 20 to 30 emails a month. Okay. Um, I was managing like, you know, I would write them for you. I would set them up for you. I would send them for you. And mm -hmm. I was also like, uh, I, I will also guarantee that w the money you're putting in, you were at least 3x that um, mm. over the course of a month. So you you will at least increase your revenue by three times more the money that you put in. So if you made like 100 grand last month, um, you pay me five grand. This month, you at least make 115 grand. Yeah, so, so if they pay you five grand, they're gonna make three x this amount, so fifteen yeah. k in return, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. So Good that's offer, great offer. Yeah. So that's what I was doing. Yeah. Um. And to be honest, I had never delivered um, 
that type of stuff before. So it was my first time trying these like Grand Slam offers, but it, wow. it works super well. Yeah, the offer yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's pretty interesting because like, if I'm not mistaken, you didn't have any previous experience in the English industry, right? Right. So you just like came up and just reached out to your client right. without any ex prior experience, neither testimonials or case studies. Right. And you were able to la land a $5,000 per month client. Right. Right? Right. So, Which is pretty insane. Yeah, pretty insane. Um, I think that m most of it comes down to the mindset. But yeah. yeah, obviously there are a lot of technical stuff involved. You need to be able to deliver. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of, a lot of guys would charge like, think like three times less for the ex exact same thing. That's how I started, you know? Yeah. Just because they don't really believe that people can afford to pay that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, honestly, like if you can, if you can make your client make like 50 grand from your emails, why wouldn't they pay like you like five grand? You deserve it. You totally deserve it. Yeah. You know? Makes sense because you are providing more value to them, right? Like let's say yeah. you were, you are doing the same services at a guy who's just starting out. Obviously, the guy is not making money yet, so he won't be able to afford the five, the five grand, right? But if you're already right. making, let's say, 100 or 200 or 300 grand a month, it's easy to afford five, 5K per month because at the end of the day, it's going to pay off, right. right? Yeah, it makes sense. It's smart. Yeah. And it's funny because when I started, it was the other way around. Like, I was starting for free. I remember uh, where, when yeah, we yeah. were doing the websites, yeah. I was getting paid, like, 500 euros to deliver a full website. I was paying wow. you, like, 100 euros, yeah? Yeah. Um, I was paying the Indian guy on Fiverr, you know, almost like also like a hundred euros. Yeah. And I had like, it was taking me months, you know, mm -hmm. I had a lot of headache for 300 small euros. Like yeah. today it's not even a restaurant note, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah. It's crazy. I think what you mentioned also, uh, made me note is that in the story that I just told, um, there, there was like a missing piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Um, so to get my first client, I had to do something that's, um, that, basically anybody listening to this should do as well. Mm -hmm. um, before getting that, that client to pay me five grand a month, um, what I did was that I offered like a free trial. So mm. I told him, hey, uh, I'll work for you for two weeks for free. And if you get some results, if you like the results of what I do, then I'd like to get testimonial from you. Like I'd like to get like a, a little video of you telling how my copy, my emails convert and they made you make a bit more money with your email campaign. So that's what I did. Um, and so we did the, f the free trial at first. I worked for the guy for free for like, I think it was like a bit less than two weeks. It was like 12 days or so. So I worked for him for 12 days and he got some pretty good results. And so that pre-framed, like it, it paved the way for me to like close them on that five grand deal. Wow. So that was cool. That's insane. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it all comes down to also delivering a lot of value at, like upfront mm -hmm. without expecting anything in return. Yeah. Uh, that's what I did and it, it worked. I uh, landed the client, you know. Makes sense. Because at the end of the day, I guess that even if you're not able to charge a client, you can at least ask for a referral, right? Yeah. Right. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's called uh, the, res the, the reciprocity principle, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. Can you talk about this a bit? Yeah, so uh, it's um, Robert Cialdini that talks about a lot in the book, Influence. Yeah, um, yeah it's, um, to sum it up, it's like just, if I give you something, you'll feel like you owe me something back, you know? Mm. So if I give you some results, I'll write your emails, I manage your marketing, and I get you some crazy, some insane results, you'll feel like you owe something to me. Like you, mm. yeah, you, 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 you'll want to do that testimonial, basically. Yeah. And you'll do it. And if after doing that testimonial, I ask you to hop on a quick call with me to discuss about your emails, you'll definitely do it because I delivered some value up front. That is yeah, the reciprocity mm. and, um, and commitment as well, which yeah. is also a concept in the book. Yeah, Highly recommend sense. that book, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it, you, you, you know, it's funny because here in Dubai, I have a lot of real estate people reaching out to me and most of the time they provide a lot of value up front, you know, right. like a lot of value while basically just giving me advices on what kind of, you know, uh, districts you need to look for, what kind of projects and stuff like that. And then you feel grateful because obviously they just like uh, help you to uh, avoid a big risk, you know, yeah. or avoiding you to, they're helping you to avoid to lose money. Mm -hmm. And then they step in like, hey, are you done for meeting? You know, 
yeah. I have this and this project. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> what should I do now? You know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's actually a really good technique to to stand out. I, I think it's very smart. Yep. For example, I have a buddy of mine who um, mostly I, I shared with him, like I mentored him to land his first client. Yeah. He's about to land him. Um, fingers crossed, but I'm super confident he'll get it. Mm. And so what he did was that he approached the guy and he literally wrote an entire sales page for the guy. Mm -hmm. So just to put things into context, like a sales page in copywriting is like about like 40 pages of worth, worth of like words, like of copywriting. Um, so it's a super powerful marketing material that costs like anywhere, anywhere in between like five grand to up to a hundred grand, you know? Mm. So if the guy who he wrote that page for had to pay for that, he would have paid like anywhere between five grand to like a hundred grand for that project. And my buddy did it for free. Plus he delivered some emails for free. Like he was like super committed to the project, even though he knew upfront that he would not get paid. And now he's probably about to land that client. Like high, there's like 99% ch chance that he'll get it. Yeah. So yeah, always deliver value. Crazy. That's insane. Yeah. And it's funny because when you are not into marketing, you cannot understand the value of a copywriter. At the end of the day, it's just like a mm -hmm. Google doc. It's a word document with yeah. some words, right? Maybe you can say that, you know, a student would be able to write uh, an essay or uh, let's say a five or six page of in a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. But the way a copywriter frames his phrases and the whole structure yeah. adds so much value that it's, you know, directly connected to revenue. So, of course, once you're aware, aware of that, once you know that, you know, uh, on the, the web page you're going to write is going to like generate at least 100K, 200K in revenue, you know, mm -hmm. it's easy to be in the mindset where you'll be able to charge more. Right. That's pretty insane. Yeah. So there's there's like this concept that I call like you have the uh, uh, million dollar skill set, but yeah. the thousand dollar mindset. Mm. Heard that in a uh, great call by uh, a guy that I follow. His name is like Alan Sultanich. And so he was talking about that. Loved the concept. So it was like, yeah, if you know you have the ability to make your clients a million bucks with what you do in marketing, but the only reason why you charge only a thousand bucks is because you don't have the mindset that your clients has, you know, yeah. you have more skill set than him. You have the million dollar skill set. Mm -hmm. He has a million, like he has a million dollar mindset and yeah. you have the thousand dollar mindset. And that is a big roadblock for a lot of people. So, mm. yeah. Makes sense. And it's, it's funny because, you know, you are coming from a very humble background, like we both are, but you were at McDonald's and at the same time, I think that you were still uh, going at high school or. Yeah. So it makes like high. I think, yeah, it was like my first year of college, actually. So, yeah. 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 And you ended up, I think, when we when we were, we were working together in my agency, uh, you were about to get your degree, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah. And right. I remember that you were about to basically just uh, drop, drop out. Yeah? Drop out, yeah. Yeah. Can you just, like, tell us a bit more about what was happening in your head at yeah. that time? So, it was, um, when was it? It was in, yeah, three years ago. Yeah, it was about three years ago. So 2020, right before, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the, the crisis happened and everything. So right before COVID. So what I was doing was that I was studying marketing at the time, but not learning anything about marketing. So yeah, it was like, you know, classical stuff like flyers and all that shit, you know? Yeah. And so <laughs> old school marketing, yeah, some old school marketing, but not the old school stuff that I would like learn in the books and everything because these are extremely important. But yeah, yeah basically I was not learning anything. And I was like, yeah, uh, if I keep on go doing this, I'll just end up like anybody else in a shady job that I'll hate, do that for 40 years of my life, mm. work hard to like just climb up in the company, have a, like a company car that is all paid for by my, my boss and, you know, have a shady boss. And basically like the entire rat race stuff that I yeah. did not want, you know? And I was like, shit, that's not what I want. I know that I do not need a degree to do whatever I want, you know. Um, it, don't get me wrong, like getting a degree might be important in some some areas, you know, like if you want to mm. become a doctor or a lawyer, super important, engineer, all like like technical stuff, super important. But for what I wanted to do in my life, it wasn't. And so, um, yeah, I wanted to drop out, but I still finished, like I still graduated uh, because, yeah, my family was, you know. I remember I was also behind you, man. Yeah, I, I come from like... <laughs> I'm from an Indian family and you got, you probably know how, yeah, yeah you definitely know because you're my brother, but mm -hmm. it is like having a degree is more important than making money. So like yeah. for them, you know, so I still graduated. Um, I graduated late, man. Uh, I think I, I failed like three, three years in my, um, my scholarship. So yeah. 
Yeah, because I remember you were literally depressed, like every single morning. Yeah. You know, your al alarm was like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that you were snoozing the alarm. I was. You know, you were supposed to wake up at 7 a.m. Yeah. You were getting out of bed at 9 because you didn't want to go to school. Yeah. But it's funny because like now when it comes to work or either gym, you know, we're going to talk about this. You are so committed because you want to do it, you know? Yeah. It's basically your passion, right? Right. So you know how, whatever happens, you would get up, you'd get out of bed and do whatever you have to do. Yeah. Right. While in other areas when you don't want to do something, and I guess we're all the same, you know, yeah. you just like push it back. I feel like, you know, if you ask yourself the question like, yeah, would I still do that thing if I wasn't getting paid? And if the, the answer is yes, then you should definitely do it. And that's what you should pursue. Yeah. And so, you know, that was what I, what was happening with like copywriting for fitness as well. Um, and so, yeah, merging both is, is definitely something that uh, mm. I'm focusing on and that I love. Yeah. So it's funny. So because you didn't learn anything at all about copywriting in school, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. learn it in books. How do you learn copywriting exactly? Yeah. So to get started with copywriting, um, yeah, the first thing that I did was that I was just doing it like, you know, I was just blindly writing copy without like really, really asking myself questions. Mm. Um, and then I started getting interested in, into like persuasion and psychology. Um, so I, I read like Robert Cialdini's books. Mm. Um, so the, the first one was um, uh, Influence and then there was like persuasion as well. Um, so that was like interesting for me to just, you know, reading books was interesting for me to just understand the structure of it. Then I read some more technical copywriting, like pure copywriting books. Um, which we call like super copywriting, super text, um, mm. like the, like the old books, you know, once again, um, super text, you know, I learned this term by, uh, Alan Soltanich, um, like the guy that I follow really hard in that, in that space. So I read like, um, you know, some books that were written basically in like the eight, late 1800s, like, um, uh, mid 1900s as well. Um, you know, that were like really like written by copywriters that do it in print, you know, there was yeah. no intra internet at the time. So mm -hmm. that's how I learned copy. Uh, and I've never bought a copywriting course, I think. Um, no, I never bought a copywriting course. So it was mostly like through books and writing, like like through in the field experience, you know. Oh, okay, right. Pretty insane. So yeah. Um, so we, yeah. Yeah, I really feel like a lot of people, you know, in, in the internet space, because it's like copywriting is mostly, you can do it on the internet or you can also become a copywriter for physical businesses or um, do it in print. But a lot of people in the industry will tell you that you need to buy a course if you want to get good at writing copy. Mm. And it is not true. Like you can honestly, like you can just read books, these books that you pay like nine to 15 bucks on Amazon. And it's, it's enough, you know, to get the mastery of the craft. Mm, okay, right. So um, in a couple of words, what would be your three best advices for if uh, someone was about to learn copywriting now? How can someone learn copywriting nowadays in 2023? Yep. Let's say the guy is totally broke, doesn't have any money, only has a smartphone with YouTube. Uh, what are the steps? Yeah. So I feel like the first step would be to um, read the basic books, you know, so don't need to put in a lot of budget into like a lot of money into investing in courses, mm -hmm. not even need to invest in courses. Just grab yourself three good books that are worth anywhere, anywhere between nine to 15 bucks on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one would be like a, a scientific advertising, how to write a good advertisement by Victor Schwab, and then um, tested advertising methods, I think. It was like by, uh, I remember the, the author's name, it was John something, any, any, anyway. Um, so yeah, get, get yourself some good books. That's the first thing. Second yeah. thing would be um, to tr like, just train yourself to write some good copy. So you see a lot, a, lot, a lot of people on the internet that run ads that have big funnels, like people like Tony Robbins, guys like that. Yeah. Just go in their email list, meaning that you should just opt in, you know, click the button like, yes, I will opt in, like give you my email uh, address. Mm -hmm. Go in their emails uh, and read their email marketing campaigns every day and like analyze them, try to mimic what they do, try to do it better reverse engineer their strategies. That's for second thing, like train yourself by reading and writing copy for these guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the third thing would be get good at like landing clients. Super important because the biggest struggle of copywriters nowadays is that these guys don't really know how to like 
get clients, you know? Yeah, of course. They're super good at marketing for people, but for themselves, it's like the hardest thing. And yeah. so, yeah, first thing, read books, like basic books. Second thing, um, learn strategies by like mimicking what others do are doing. And then third thing, really get good at acquiring customers and clients. That's the third thing, super important. Okay, okay, insane. And um, how about, let's say now someone has the skills, you know, someone just follow your steps and has some common sense and knowledge about copywriting. Mm -hmm. What would be your three advices to help this guy land some clients? So the first thing would be to um, connect with as many people as you can. And by connecting, I'm not talking about like, hey, you should go to, go to the bar and talk to people. I'm really talking about like, so let's say, first thing would be to have your, yourself like a dream 100 list. So a list of 100 people you'd like to work with, right? Let's say you want to work with like, I don't know, like a YouTube superstar that like Mr. Beast or Logan Paul, you know, just put these people in a list. And once you have those names on a list, um, focus heavily on reaching out to them. Mm. And I promise if you just focus for like, let's say 90 days yeah, to approach like these hundred people every day, like you, you send them messages, like on, on their email, if you don't, if, it, if they do not reply through email and you send them like a DM and then it's, <laughs> if they don't reply on Instagram, you send them DM on LinkedIn, like do anything you can. Yeah, you go everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Some people even said, send packages to their houses, which is crazy. <laughs> That's so crazy. do anything you can to connect with these people and provide them value. That's the first thing. Connecting. To connect with people, you got to do it in a genuine way. Don't do it like in a, pro in a prospective way. Like, hey, I'm looking for... Uh, to become your copywriter so that, that this would not work you know mm. what you got to do is like really connect in a genuine way like hey like your content and i want to provide value all right so this goes along with the second thing which is provide value to these people yeah okay so once you get to like heavily connect with these people provide value to them and third thing would be to over deliver so i want to talk about my friend once again the guy that i just told you guys about that i just told you about which was um like he offer like 15,000, I think, yeah, anywhere between like $15,000, uh, uh, of, like worth of work of copywriting mm -hmm. work for free. Like he invests like his entire week just to delivering for a guy that he has like no certainty that this guy will end up working with him, you know, but he delivered so, so much that it, the guy is impressed. So over deliver yeah. to these people, show them how, like how hungry you are. And, um, yeah, but I feel like the biggest role for these guys is really to like get to connect with people. That's the hard part. Yeah, that's totally insane because it's so inspiring. So literally, um, if I get it right, you don't need any technical knowledge nor background or uh, marketing background to learn about copywriting. You can just read books and it's pretty easy to get started, right? Because you're just like, you just go to one of your friends how to get started and he's about to land a client. So I think it's, it's not easy. Um, like, if we were to take like anybody in the street and tell them, Hey, let's become a copywriter and train you for like 90 days. Yeah. You can give, give them any, anything you want. If they don't like it, mm. it would ju just not work. But if you like, if you're interested about copy, um, and if you follow like the rules, like, you know, mastering and studying the books, mm. training hard, like, you know, it's just like going to the gym, you know, of you course. just become disciplined and like write a quality piece of copy every day. 90 days and then you study everything and then you read the books then yeah you'll definitely get good and that's why my like my the buddies that i'm training right now are also getting some crazy results so, amazing yeah. amazing yeah right okay so just right before we wrap up i just have two last questions yeah um talking about gym yeah yeah uh i know that you know you're pretty pretty uh disciplined with the gym yeah it's been like how, how long five six years i think a bit more yeah yeah Six, seven? Yep, not sure. Six, six seven. seven. And yeah. it's super impressive because you didn't miss, I think, a day, mm -hmm. right? Being consistent either on your diet mm -hmm. or on hitting the gym, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So can you tell us more about your, your passion? Because it's totally yeah. insane. You have, you are so committed. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that's also something that, you know, just like I said before, if you can do stuff and you enjoy doing it without, without getting paid for it, then you should definitely pursue them and... Yeah, going to the gym brings me fulfillment. Uh, that's what I do at the end of my days. Um, I feel like it's the icing of the, of the cake of every like of my days, you know. So yeah. I get to work every day, for my like for my agency and whatever I do, my channel and everything. And then at seven p.m., like the, the biggest like relief is like going to the gym, 
you know. <laughs> Um, for me, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For a lot of people, it's pain yeah. in the ass. But for me, like, it really brings me fulfillment. You know, the fact that you, you know, get to put in some efforts for something that's, you know, not really having like the instant gratification. You gotta yeah. wait, wait so much long, like, of course. a lot of time, like, to get some results. So, um, yeah, going to the gym brings me fulfillment, and also su- super fun. You know, to lift heavy shit. So that's what I like. You know, um, so I mostly do it like you know I do weighted calisthenics. Um, you know, what is it? so it's like, you know, like the basic movements, like weighted pull, like pull ups, yeah, dips, you yeah. know, um, muscle ups, yeah. You know, so it's a mix of pull up and then you do a muscle up over the bar and then squat. Um, so I do these, but weighted, so with like a chain with weight attached, that's what I like. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's a mix of like weighted calisthenics and also like aesthetics because I like, you know, building my body for like, you know, to get it like aesthetic as well. So that's what I like. And yeah, it's a passion, man. It's a passion. And also the nutrition side of things, something that I like um, is because, you know, it, I feel like everything I do in the gym translate, it, it translates to business as well. You know, if you're able to sustain that for long enough until the point you get some results, then same thing for business. If you're able to do the exact same thing that works um, for like three, five years, then you'll definitely succeed. So, yeah. Okay. Super inspiring. All right. Last question before we wrap up. Um, what would be the one thing you would tell to someone, let's say, who is totally broke, who, you know, aspires to living a better life, who wants to make money online, wants to learn about copywriting, what would be the one and only advice you would give him? Mm. So there's this entrepreneur that I like, his name is Jason Capital. He talks about the concept to light your chair on fire. Um, it's mostly, you got to approach this situation like there's no other way. Like, you just got to, view like see success as the only way for you to to live you know yeah. it's like either i succeed or either i die that's it you know mm. so uh yeah that's how i view it all right okay amazing thanks man where Thank can people can find you yeah so i have a youtube channel uh priyank mohan we'll yeah. probably put it in the editing or whatnot and i have an instagram um priyank mohan as well so yeah that's it all right okay perfect thank you man thank you bro okay, cool All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the value. Uh, It was pretty insane for this first episode with my brother Priyank. Uh, Don't forget to, you know, just drop some comments, hit the like button and subscribe to his channel. And we see you on the next one. Cheers.